Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So for this week's video, I thought I might discuss the seven things that will make a difference on how quick and how successful you are growing plants in your planted aquarium. I'm going to discuss a range of different things that could be affecting your plant's growth and success rate. And this video is going to be full of information, so make sure you stay around to the end so you can hear all the tips. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's free and we're giving out heaps of free content every week and just making this hobby a little bit easier every time you watch a video. So without any further ado, let's get started. So tip number one is to have good lighting in your aquarium. Having good lighting in an aquarium is super duper important because plants use the light for photosynthesis processes and if you don't have good enough light in your aquarium, the plants will perish. It's important that you have a light that's bright enough for the plants to receive the light and use it to grow. Plants in an aquarium photosynthesize for about 14 hours a day at max. So it's important that you also have the light on a timer so it can have uh, periods where it makes lots of energy during photosynthesis and periods where it can take a break and use the energy to grow. It's also important to be cautious on how bright the light is because if a light's too bright in an aquarium, it can actually stress fish and shrimp out and cause them to die. So tip number two is to have a nutrient rich substrate. While most of a plant uses uh, nutrients from outside the leaves, it's also important that you have nutrients inside the ground for the roots to soak up. Uh, these nutrients are really important for the development of the roots of the plant. So the plant needs to actually soak into the substrate so it can't float away. And the nutrients inside the substrate are super important for this. It's important that you don't use a grain like pebbles or um, too big of a size of a mineral so that the plants can actually grow into it. So I recommend something like a really fine gravel or sand and I'm sure that will create some success with uh, the development of the roots of a plant. Another thing that will rapidly increase the health and the growth of plants is adding fertilizers to the soil. Uh, these come in forms of tablets and they're available on my website and I'll link them down in the description below. So tip number three is to have CO2 in the aquarium water. CO2 can be quite expensive to have and quite tricky to maintain in an aquarium. CO2 kits can range from about $100 to $300 depending on the quality and size of the CO2 kit. Adding carbon dioxide gas to the aquarium water will dramatically increase the growth rate of plants and the health of the plants as well. Having CO2 in an aquarium is not essential and I don't keep any CO2 kits in my aquariums. Having a CO2 kit requires a lot of attention and maintenance because you have to make sure that you don't poison your fish by adding too much CO2 into the aquarium. Tip number three is to have a good balance of fish to plants. Plants use uh, nutrients from fish waste to uh, grow and develop and having a good ratio of fish to plants in your aquarium is beneficial for both uh, parties as they will both, uh, one will take all the bad nutrients and toxins out of the aquarium and use it to grow and the other one will maintain because it'll have healthy water. But if you have um, not enough plants and too many fish in your aquarium, uh, the plants will not be able to keep up with the amount of uh, toxins in the water and will actually kill off the fish. I wouldn't worry too much about this happening because plants and fish will often uh, balance each other out and end up creating a really steady ecosystem by themselves. But it's important to keep this aware and in the back of your mind in case it does happen. Tip number four is to make sure you don't have too many floating plants. Floating plants are very beneficial for the aquarium because they take out large amounts of uh, toxins out of the water. But having too many of them can actually cover the surface of the aquarium water and not allow any light to go through to bottom aquarium plants. This will dramatically limit the growth of the plants in the substrate and can often kill them so it's important to make sure that you don't have too many floating plants like duckweed or frog bit covering up the surface of your aquarium and limiting the light that can go through to the bottom plants. So for tip number six uh, you have to make sure that you have good tank mates for the plants you're keeping. Some fish will eat the plants in your aquarium and of course this isn't going to work because the plants will just die straight away. So it's important to make sure you do your research before you buy any plant and any fish and you mix them together because often cichlids and other um, aggressive fish will eat the plants in the aquarium and goldfish are known for this as well. So uh, the plants won't be able to keep up with the eating and will often die. So before you buy any plant, make sure that you have a good tank mates for the plant and that it can be safe from being eaten. So the final tip is to know the type of plant you're growing. Some plants grow fast and some plants grow slow. Uh, some plants require different parameters than others, so it's important to know what kind of plant you're growing and uh, the things you need. Some plants require CO2 to be successful in an aquarium, so it's really important that you do your research before you, before you buy any plant and make sure that you have an aquarium that will suit the needs of this plant. I recommend plants that grow pretty fast and are easily maintained for beginners, so like 
Uh, I have Water Wisteria and Bacopa and Java Moss, and they're all perfect for beginner fish keepers. But if you're after something a little bit more risky and something a bit harder to take care of, I de definitely recommend stuff like uh, Dwarf Hairgrass and um, other carpeting plants because they're quite a challenge to take care of and they're also really rewarding. So with all that said, that wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see in the future, uh, please feel free to go and uh, leave that in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.